The one question everyone wants to know is if their upcoming cruise will actually sail. And the simple answer is no one knows. Why is it so hard to answer this question? And why don't we know when cruises will resume? I'll share the details why up next. Hey everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And listen, if there's one question everybody wants to know is, will their cruise they have booked coming up at some point soon actually sail? And at the risk of making this video and then immediately jinxing myself because some big announcement will come down and then this video is completely obsolete, I'm still gonna tell you exactly why, as of right now anyway, cruises are still kind of up in the air and we no one knows when cruises will actually resume. So if you want the TLDR answer, it's no one knows, but here's a bigger answer as to why that is the case because it's a very common concern among so many Royal Caribbean blog readers and YouTube watchers who want to know if their cruise they have booked at some point, whether it's in 2020 or 2021, will actually sail. The most commonly asked question I've seen over the last few months is what are the odds of a sailing actually being able to go? But unfortunately, no one really knows because there's just not enough information available and too many variables to make any kind of prediction. Since Royal Caribbean started its global suspension of cruises in March, the cruise line has taken a wait and see approach to cruises resuming. They have periodically canceled about a month's worth of cruises at a time, and then they evaluate the ever-changing situation to determine if more cruises need to be canceled. At this point, there's just not nearly enough information available to have insight into what Royal Caribbean, or really any cruise line, is looking for in order to resume sailings. While it stands to reason the further out your cruise is, the more time you have for the global health situation to improve, it's impossible to quantify or even wager a guess as to which sailings may or may not occur. However, while we don't have access to Royal Caribbean's game plan, or certainly we're not part of any of their internal meetings about what they're planning, what they're thinking about, we can at least come up with a few challenges, hurdles, if you will, that Royal Caribbean needs to overcome in order to resume sailings. Chief among them, number one, without a shadow of a doubt, is the CDC's no sail order. The United States Centers for Disease Control, aka the CDC, has implemented something called the No Sail Order that basically prohibits any cruise ship that has 250 passengers or more from operating in the United States. And that's basically every single Royal Caribbean ship out there and pretty much any cruise ship worth talking about here in the scope of this broadcast. So with that in mind, these government restrictions are basically aimed at preventing a cruise from happening. And this is because the CDC believes that cruise ships present a clear and present danger to many people living in the U.S. According to the CDC's recent no-sale order, they said, quote, cruise ships continue to be an unsafe environment with close quarters where the disease spreads easily and is not readily detected. And the CDC basically sees four major areas as necessitating the extension of a no-sale order until who knows when. Number one, the continued spread of COVID-19 worldwide. Number two, risk of resurgence in countries that have suppressed transmission. Number three, ongoing concerns related to restarting of cruising internationally. And lastly, the need for additional time to assess industry measures to control potential COVID-19 transmission onboard cruise ships with passengers without, quote unquote, burdening the public health. Now, all of those concerns from the CDC are exactly what Royal Caribbean has been working on for the better part of the summer in terms of trying to come up with these new protocols and rules that will make cruising quote unquote safe. Now, Royal Caribbean already commissioned something called the Healthy Sail Panel. You've probably heard about this. This is a blue ribbon group of scientists, health officials, and epidemiologists that came up with 74 steps that they believe will allow cruise lines to operate safely. The panel's recommendations have been turned into new Royal Caribbean rules, and Royal Caribbean calls this the Royal Promise, and this is the heart of what Royal Caribbean is doing to make sure that its cruises are safe to operate, and they're starting with those new sailings in Singapore. You may have read at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, but Quantum of the Seas will resume sailings in Singapore in December. These sailings are going to be three and four night sailings only for residents of Singapore, and they include no port stops whatsoever. In addition, they have received permission from the Singapore government because of these new regulations. Now, it stands to reason that these same protocols, these royal promise rules, will then be applied and proposed to the CDC for their approval to demonstrate that yes, cruises can operate safely. But without a shadow of a doubt, the number one hurdle for any cruise line to restart operations is going to be the no sale order. Number two, ports of calls need to open up. 
even if cruises were allowed to resume immediately, many foreign ports have closed off their ports to cruise traffic. So why do the cruise ports matter? Can't the cruise ships just go out in the middle of the ocean and not visit any ports? Well, unfortunately they can, at least not in the United States. Something called the Passenger Vessel Services Act requires foreign flagged vessels to stop outside the United States and Royal Caribbean's cruise ships are all foreign flagged vessels. Essentially, this means Royal Caribbean cannot offer cruises to nowhere. Now, while some Caribbean and European ports are beginning to open their borders again, cruise lines are going to need much greater access to start up again. But at the very least, they're going to need some ports close to home to allow them to restart operations. I kind of feel like this one is a little easier to happen. I think that when cruise lines are ready to go, there will be some countries that will say, yes, absolutely, we'll take your money. I mean, your cruise ships to come over here and visit us again. And the other major thing we really need to see, and this is not just true of cruise lines, but really the entire world is waiting for this, is a substantial reduction in the global health threat. It may seem like the elephant in the room not to talk about it, but the pandemic status really needs to not be a major health crisis. It's debatable to what extent the situation needs to improve, but the cruise industry is looking for the risks associated with operating to be substantially less. Part of this will be achieved via these new protocols I mentioned earlier that are going to allow cruise ships to operate more safely, but a reduction in cases around the world would certainly ease a lot of people's minds, especially those that are controlling the reins of cruise lines and their operations. If all of this sounds awful and you're thinking there's no hope for cruises to resume anytime soon, I think you're probably wrong on that. Unlike previous months when there was no indication of when Royal Caribbean cruises might actually restart, it does seem like there's a little bit more momentum to have cruises resuming. And the outlook to me is very bright that it may occur sooner than later. Different Royal Caribbean executives have expressed an optimism about cruises resuming sooner. And a couple of key steps still remain before Royal Caribbean can start up again, including, of course, the no sale order being lifted, a formal restart plan by Royal Caribbean being announced, and of course, crew members being brought back to start training and of course, getting back on board the ship. If that seems like a lot, it is. But this feels like the closest we've been in a long time to cruises actually restarting. The Healthy Sail panel outlined how cruises could restart with a series of test sailings for crews to train and then short sailings to a Royal Caribbean private destination for paying guests. If all goes well, the cruise line could increase the duration and amount of ships sailing. So while no one knows exactly when cruises might restart in the US or Europe, the situation today is definitely better than it was just a few months ago. And the cruise industry as a whole seems to be pretty optimistic right now. If you have a cruise book that is coming up in the next few months, you can still ride this out a bit longer and see what happens. Of course, if Royal Caribbean cancels your cruise, you'll get the option for a refund or a future cruise credit. But if that kind of ambiguity doesn't really sit well with you and you'd rather cancel now to be able to rebook later, the Cruise with Confidence program offers a lot of flexible options. Personally, I'm holding on to my cruises I have booked and seeing when cruises are ready to restart, I'll be ready to hop on board whenever they're ready for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and turn on your YouTube notifications so that way you'll be notified as soon as I have a brand new video to share. And by the way, I'm live every Monday on our YouTube channel where you can come every Monday evening and hang out and talk some Royal Caribbean with me. So look for those live videos on Monday evenings. So until next time, I'm Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.